components of the government budget. What is a budget? Meaning and concept. Government has several policies to implement in the overall task of performing its functions to meet the objectives of social and economic growth. For implementing these policies, it needs to spend huge amount of funds on defense, administration and development, welfare projects and various other relief operations. Thus, it is imperative to find out all possible sources of getting funds so that sufficient revenue can be generated to meet the mounting expenditure. Planning process of assessing Revenue and expenditure is termed as budget. The term budget is derived from the French word budget, which means a leather bag or a wallet. It is a statement of the financial plan of the government. It shows the income and expenditure of the government during a financial year which runs generally from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. There is a constitutional requirement in India to present before the parliament a statement of estimated receipts and expenditures of the government in respect of every financial year, which runs from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. This annual financial statement constitutes the main budget document Further, the budget must distinguish expenditure on the revenue account from other expenditures. Therefore, the budget comprises of Revenue Budget and Capital Budget Let us understand some important terms related to budget. Revenue Budget This financial statement includes the revenue receipts of the government, that is, revenue collected by way of taxes and other receipts. It also contains the items of expenditure met from such revenue. Revenue Receipts Revenue receipts are the incomes which are received by the government from all sources in its ordinary course of governance. These receipts do not create a liability or result in reduction of assets. Revenue receipts are further classified as tax revenue and non-tax revenue. Tax revenues consist of proceeds of taxes and other duties levied by the central government. Tax revenues, an important component of revenue receipts, comprise of direct taxes and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are those taxes which have to be paid by the person on whom they are levied. Its burden cannot be shifted to someone else. Indirect taxes are those taxes which are levied on commodities and services and affect the income of a person through their consumption expenditure. In this case, the burden can be shifted to some other person. Excise taxes are the single largest revenue earner contributing to 35.7% of total tax revenue in the year 2003-2004. Other direct taxes like wealth tax, gift tax and estate duty, which is now abolished, have never been of much significance in terms of revenue yield and have thus been referred to as paper taxes. Two new taxes, the fringe benefits tax and on cash withdrawals from banks over a certain threshold in a day were introduced in the budget for 2005 to 2006. So, just what is fringe benefit tax? The taxation of perquisites or fringe benefits provided by an employer to his employees in addition to the cash salary or wages paid is fringe benefit tax. A point to be noted. The redistribution objective of the government is sought to be achieved through progressive income taxation in which higher the income, higher is the tax rate. Firms are taxed on a proportional basis where the tax rate is a particular proportion of profits. With respect to excise taxes, necessities of life are exempted or taxed at low rates 
comforts and semi-luxuries are moderately taxed and luxuries, tobacco and petroleum products are taxed heavily. Non-tax revenue Apart from taxes, governments also receive revenue from other non-tax sources. Non-tax revenue of the central government mainly consists of interest receipts on account of loans by the central government which constitutes the single largest item of non-tax revenue, dividends and profits on investments made by the government, fees and other receipts for services rendered by the government, cash grants and aid from foreign countries and international organizations are also included. The estimates of revenue receipts take into account the effects of tax proposals made in the finance bill. What is revenue expenditure? Revenue expenditure is the expenditure incurred for the routine, usual and normal day-to-day -day running of government departments and provision of various services to citizens. It includes both development and non-development expenditure of the central government. Broadly speaking, revenue expenditure consists of all those expenditures of the government which do not result in creation of physical or financial assets. It relates to those expenses incurred for the normal functioning of the government departments and various services, interest payments on debt incurred by the government and grants given to state governments and other parties even though some of the grants may be meant for creation of assets. Budget documents classify total revenue expenditure into plan and non-plan expenditure. Plan revenue expenditure relates to central plans, the five-year plans and central assistance for state and union territory plans. Next is the capital account. The capital budget is an account of the assets as well as liabilities of the central government which take into consideration changes in capital. It consists of capital receipts and capital expenditure of the government. This shows the capital requirements of the government and the pattern of their financing. What are capital receipts? Receipts which create a liability or result in a reduction in assets are called capital receipts. They are obtained by the government by raising funds through borrowings, recovery of loans, and disposing of assets. Capital Receipts The main items of capital receipts are loans raised by the government from public, which are called market borrowings, borrowings by the government from the reserve bank and commercial banks and other financial institutions through the sale of treasury bills, loans received from foreign governments and international organizations and recoveries of loans granted by the central government. Other items include small savings, post office savings account, national savings certificates, etc., provident funds and net receipts obtained from the sale of shares in public sector undertakings, that is, PSUs. What is capital expenditure? Any projected expenditure which is incurred for creating asset with a long life is capital expenditure. Capital expenditure. This includes expenditure on the acquisition of land, building, machinery, equipment, investment in shares and loans and advances by the central government to state and union territory governments, PSUs, and other parties. Capital expenditure is also categorized as plan and 
non-plan in the budget documents. Plan capital expenditure, like its revenue counterpart, relates to central plan and central assistance for state and union territory plans. Non-plan capital expenditure covers various general, social, economic services provided by the government. When a government spends more than it collects by way of revenue, it incurs a budget deficit. There are various measures that capture government deficit and they have their own implications for the economy. Revenue Deficits The revenue deficit refers to the excess of government's revenue expenditure over revenue receipts. The revenue deficit includes only such transactions that affect the current income and expenditure of the government. When the government incurs a revenue deficit, it implies that the government is dissaving and using up the savings of other sectors of the economy to finance a part of its consumption expenditure. The situation of revenue deficit means that the government will have to borrow not only to finance its investment but also its consumption requirements. This will lead to a build-up of stock of debt and interest liabilities and force the government eventually to cut expenditure. Since a major part of revenue expenditure is committed expenditure, it cannot be reduced. Often, the government reduces productive capital expenditure or welfare expenditure. This would mean lower growth and adverse welfare implications. Fiscal Deficit Fiscal deficit is the difference between the government's total expenditure and total receipts, excluding borrowing. It can be written as shown. Non-debt creating capital receipts are those receipts which are not borrowings and therefore do not give rise to debt. Examples are recovery of loans and the proceeds from the sale of PSUs. The fiscal deficit will have to be financed through borrowings. Thus, it indicates the total borrowing requirements of the government from all sources. From the financing side, it is written as shown. Net borrowings at home include directly borrowed from the public through debt instruments, for example, the various small savings schemes and indirectly from commercial banks through statutory liquidity ratio, that is SLR. Primary Deficit It is important to note that the borrowings requirement of the government includes interest obligations on accumulated debt. To obtain an estimate of borrowing on account of current expenditure exceeding revenues, we need to calculate what has been called the primary deficit. It is simply the fiscal deficit minus the interest payments. It is written as shown. Net interest liabilities consist of interest payments minus interest receipts by the government on net domestic lending. One of Keynes' main ideas in the general theory of employment, interest and money was that government fiscal policy should be used to stabilize the level of output and employment. Through changes in its expenditure and taxes, the government attempts to increase output and income and seeks to stabilize the ups and downs in the economy. In the process, fiscal policy creates a surplus, that is, when total receipts exceed expenditure or a deficit budget when the total expenditure exceeds receipts rather than a balanced budget when expenditure equals receipts. The government directly affects the level of equilibrium income in two specific ways. Government purchase of goods and services G. Increase aggregate demand and taxes and transfer effect of the relation between income Y and disposable income Yd 
the income available for consumption and saving with the households. Let's talk about taxes first. We assume that the government imposes taxes that do not depend on income, called lump sum taxes, equal to T. We assume throughout the analysis that government makes a constant amount of transfers, TR bar. Important point to note is that taxes lower disposable income and consumption. For instance, if one earns 1 lakh rupees and has to pay 10,000 rupees in taxes, she has the same disposable income as someone who earns 90,000 rupees but pays no taxes. Thus, the definition of aggregate demand augmented to include the government will be written as shown. The income determination condition in the product market will be Y equal to AD, which can be written as shown. On solving the equilibrium level of income, we get a new equation as shown. Case of proportional taxes. A more realistic assumption would be that the government collects a constant fraction T of income in the form of taxes so that capital T is equal to small t y. The consumption function with proportional taxes is given as shown. Fiscal policy instruments can be varied to offset the effects of undesirable shifts in investment demand, that is, as shown. And equilibrium income remains the same. This deliberate action to stabilize the economy is often referred to as discretionary fiscal policy to distinguish it from the inherent automatic stabilizing properties of the fiscal system. Thus, to summarize in a nutshell, 